Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the second module uh, of AI which is uh, regarding some depth explanations of the uh, predicate logics and all ok so what all those things are uh, what it means is in uh, third semester we had studied a subject called discrete mathematics right in that some um, uh, truth values and the uh, uh, logical operators those things were there right the same things we will be discussing here as well but we will be apply using those things in the um, AI uh, domain ok so how to apply those things what are the uh, important questions what you need to to write how to uh, score good marks what are the key points all these things i'll be discussing in this video so before starting if you like this hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel your support helps me make more videos like this so uh, all the links can be found in the description box you can go through it and download these notes for your reference okay <coughs> so basically we have to represent a knowledge okay so if uh, you have a knowledge about something and you got to represent it how do you represent before representation you need to know how to um, what are the main components of it okay so four types of knowledge are there okay four different kinds of uh, knowledge representations are there in ai systems the first one is objects second is events third is performance and fourth is meta knowledge okay so these are the four different kinds of objects what do these means object means that whatever the um, thing is there okay like guitar have strings and all these things are uh, nothing but the objects okay and if something is happening that is called as event okay and what is happening that is called as performance a behavior like playing the guitar any activity that is what uh, that is called as what performance okay and meta knowledge is uh, knowledge about what you know knowledge about what you know okay so uh, if you know abc that the uh, the meta knowledge is that i know abc i know abc is nothing but meta knowledge this meta knowledge this is knowledge so four things are there in knowledge representation how many uh, what are those four things Object which are nothing but the entities events are nothing but the things which are happening performance is nothing but the action which is happening and meta knowledge is about uh, the knowledge about what you know fine these are the four things that's the first thing you need to know now we have to map some things okay what do you mean by mapping to solve any issue if there is any issue we have to solve it we need to have two things first is a large amount of knowledge so then only we will be able to apply this to the uh, problem to solve it right otherwise without knowledge is not able to solve it also just having the knowledge is not sufficient how do you solve it using some mechanism that's the second thing you need to know what is the mechanism you are going to apply by using this knowledge that is what is called the uh, two things large amount of knowledge and uh, some mechanism to solve any complex issue now it's not always that we have large amount of knowledge right so we need to explore the things how do you explore by using the facts and by using the representation of facts okay by using these two we'll be exploring and at two levels we'll be exploring knowledge level and symbol level so this was a brief introduction about what knowledge is how it is represented what knowledge is composed of these are the four things and the ways to represent the knowledge so let's dive deep into it okay so what is the uh, process happening in anything uh, around the world in anything what happens in around the world is input will be there some process will happen then the output will be formed right that is what is uh, called as mapping between facts and representations suppose that you have some facts and you uh, do some processing on it and you get newer facts that is what is happening as a cycle here okay so forward representation and backward representation are two kinds of representation it maps from facts to representation and this maps from representation to facts like in a backward manner and a forward manner there is facts here there is representation here this is called as forward representation and this is called as what backward representation okay so there is an example given here spot is a dog this is a fact right spot is a dog is a what it's a fact now if you have to represent it how will by uh, representing is dog in bracket spot whenever you see this kind of representation this is mostly used in AI also in predicate logic okay so spot is a dog how you will write dog spot and it is uh, read as spot is a dog like that whatever is in the bracket that you will read and add is then you will write whatever is about um, outside the bracket fine if you have another sentence all dog have tails then you will be writing since all came here so first you have to write here this one this symbol is known as a universal quantifier this i'll explain in detail in the upcoming topic for now just remember that if all comes you have to use this symbol here then what you will write dog have tails so you'll write here dog of x then arrow has tail of x right so that's what is the representation dog of x and has tail of x fine then it can also be represented as has tail and spot now why i've writ uh, written is uh, written it in this way is has tail and here uh, spot is given so spot has tail like that it will be represented it's coming out of two sentences this thing which you can see here is coming out of how many sentences two sentences dog spot and dog x has tail in the place of x here what i am uh, putting is a uh, spot 
right dog spot and dog x so x will become spot here obviously here also it will become spot so that's what my answer has tail spot to solve any problem using forward or backward representation we need to have initial facts we'll do some processing on that facts which is the internal representation of the facts then we'll uh, apply the programs and then we will in, uh, do the internal representation of initial fact uh, fact uh, facts by using the backward representation and then we'll be going to the final facts see in uh, forward representation you will go from facts to representation in backward you'll go from representation to facts okay so this is the actual uh, design meaning we want first we'll have initial fact then we want final facts okay like that we'll be solving the problem first we will be given with these sentences these sentences are real life sentences my name is afnan that's a real life sentence so how can i uh, convert that sentence my name is afnan name afnan like that i will write fine so that's what the two uh, things and that's what about the basics of uh, knowledge the next super important question which is much more repeated and high uh, weightage question which is what are the approaches for knowledge representation what are the approaches approaches for what for knowledge representation just now we discuss what is knowledge representation representing a knowledge in a standard form representing what a knowledge in a standard form is called as knowledge representation now how you will approach to do this how you will approach to do this is what is asked in the question so there are four ways of approaching before you do to, uh, before you know what is the approaches you need to know some properties okay so you need to know some properties of knowledge representation what are those properties there are four properties okay so representational adequacy just remember the ability to represent so every knowledge representation system should be having the ability to represent because then only it is called as a knowledge representation system if it does not have the ability to represent what it will be called um, it will not be called knowledge representation system right because it does not have the ability to represent that's your first property representational adequacy the ability to represent all kinds of knowledge so it will not do bias i'll not represent this knowledge i'll not represent this knowledge no it's not it's not like that the system should be able to represent all kinds of knowledge that are needed in that domain so if you are uh, working in machine learning if you don't represent certain kind of uh, information and by uh, because of that the machine will not give the correct output that will be the wrong output right so that is what is called representational adequacy next we have inferential ad uh, adequacy just see what i have underlined manipulate the knowledge represented so the system should be able to manipulate the knowledge represented suppose that someone told you lies and you thought that as knowledge and that you included in your um, whatever system you have after that you came to know that it is falsehood then you obviously need to eliminate that right no one will keep falsehood within themselves right so you need to eliminate what falsehood so you need to have a system which can manipulate the knowledge represented that's what is called inferential adequacy similarly we have inferential efficiency efficiency is nothing but incorporate new knowledge into the uh, structure okay get the new knowledge and uh, put it into the additional structure okay that is what is called inferential efficiency acquisitional efficiency is nothing but we are not getting the new information we are acquiring new information okay we are acquiring and getting there is a, a subtle difference between acquiring and getting getting means you are just getting someone gave you acquiring means you are getting the you are doing some hard work and achieving it that is what is called like uh, acquisitional um, efficiency so what are the four properties of uh, any knowledge representation system the ability to represent which is called as representational adequacy second is it should be able to manipulate which is called inferential adequacy the third one is inferential efficiency which means incorporate into the knowledge structure additional information last is acquisitional by the name itself you can understand which is able to acquire new known information easily now since we have got a, a slight information regarding the properties we can move ahead with the um, <coughs> schemes okay so there are four types of schemes very simple relational knowledge is this the basic scheme relational knowledge is just a uh, like uh, simple relational knowledge there will be uh, some values here and the rows and tables will be there and uh, the values corresponding to each of these will be written under the specific column that is what is called simple relational knowledge it provides a framework to compare two objects based on the equivalent attributes means if i want to comp uh, compare compare uh, mace and ruth what i will do you know, whether i have to compare in height weight or bat or throws i'll be choosing one of them and then i'll be comparing who is more better in that one okay like that i'll be comparing the uh, two objects that is what is called simple relational knowledge simple rows and columns they will have values and you will be comparing two objects next is inheritable knowledge inheritable means you will have a class here you will be inheriting that class with some attributes that is what is called inheritable 
in inheritable knowledge you have to um, remember two things okay is a and instance okay I, i'll explain you what do these terms mean more in more detail in the upcoming topics for now just remember it's a subclass okay for example there's a person and adult male person uh, here it is adult male here is a person right adult male is a person like that you will take okay adult male is a person okay next what you have baseball player pitcher pitcher and fielder both are two different um roles assigned right pitcher and fielder is a boss, uh, baseball player coming to instance here is a, a particular person's name given three singer brown he is an instance of pitcher pitcher is a role and the instance is given the actual difference is not that clear as of now but uh, you'll get to know when you come in upcoming top when you learn the upcoming topics for now all you have to remember is inheritable knowledge is there will be a object here you will be inheriting that object with some uh, shared property okay that is what is called uh, inheritable knowledge the simple uh, representational knowledge is nothing but you'll have rows and columns and some values will be assigned so to compare two objects inheritable knowledge you will have an object here and you will be inheriting that object with the same properties just said just a slight difference in between them okay that is what is called inheritable uh, knowledge next uh, there is a property of uh, inheritance this is an algorithm so if you are just going uh, briefly over the module you can uh, skip this part and go to the next property uh, I, i mean the next representational knowledge scheme or else you can uh, listen this algorithm the algorithm is very simple you'll have o which is the knowledge base okay there is an object o okay so from o you will be finding an attribute a if you got the attribute a you will return value if you get the attribute a you will uh, report what value else you will report false okay or fail if you don't have any attribute then search for the corresponding node for the value with attribute a whatever node value you didn't get search for that in the entire set when you do it then return if you don't uh, get it then report it is not there okay that's all what is there get the node of its attribute move to that node see if the attribute is there if, uh, if it is there report it else don't report so this is an algorithm how do you use property inheritance fine so this uh, anyways optional you can move on to the third topic which is inferential knowledge inferencing means what i can infer from the fact that there is uh, going to be uh, like there are uh, black clouds in the sky they, uh, there could be rain today that you are inferring from the observation that observation inference is called as um, like uh, no that process is called as inferencing like by using some knowledge you will be inferencing some results for that uh, we will be using some uh, symbols so, so those symbols are present here implication not or and for all there exists so by using this will be inferencing something for example if you are uh, tall there is a high chance that you can climb a, a tree for uh, for that instance okay so if you are tall you can uh, climb a tree this is what is called in um, inferential knowledge you are inferencing that if a person is tall that person can climb a tree that is what is called inferential um, knowledge okay moving on uh, see this uh, some examples here wonder is a name of dog so dog uh, what can be inferenced is dog's name is wonder okay all dog belongs to the class of animals how you can represent this for all x dog of x belongs to animal of x all animals either live in land or water so all animals for all x animal of x live x uh, where x is uh, means um, x lives in land or live x comma water means x lives in water like this you have to read okay x lives in land or x lives in water so for all the animals x either x lives in land or x lives in water that's exactly what i have written here so that was the third thing the last thing is procedural knowledge procedural knowledge means you are uh, doing something the procedure of uh, doing things that is what is called procedure uh, procedural knowledge the knowledge of doing things how to do it that is what is called procedural knowledge so for example if it is the ninth inning so in cricket it is ninth inning okay ninth inning is going on and the score is close and less than two outs okay score is very close to the target and less than two outs have happened first base is vacant and batter is better hitter than the next batter if these conditions satisfy if is there so if these conditions satisfy then what should happen walk the batter walk the batter means will be uh, doing uh, this action whatever is specified here so this is what is called procedural knowledge by using some procedures and the conditions you will be reaching some conclusion what is to be performed that is what is called uh, procedural knowledge so it is a knowledge which is encoded in some procedures the most commonly used technique for representing procedural knowledge is the use of production rules what is production rules rules that specify uh, what should happen then uh, means if this happens what should happen if this happens what should happen those are called what Pro uh, production rules what do production rules specify if this will happen then what should happen fine 
so procedural uh, knowledge as rules consider them as rules okay so that's what basically the four types of representation before that you need to know what are the properties of um, knowledge representation systems so that's all for this question and let's move on to the next one the next super important question is regarding what are the issues of knowledge representation okay there are some issues in knowledge representation so you have to discuss that okay so what are the uh, issues means there are um, while representing the knowledge there are uh, some problems arising okay so how many problems are arising five problems are arising which we'll be discussing now so these are the five problems and uh, what do these terms mean and what you are supposed to write in the exam if this question comes that we'll be discussing now okay so let's uh, start from the first one which is important attributes okay important attributes means there are attributes that are of general significance okay so there are two types of attributes instance and is a uh, okay that are of general importance so what are the important attributes those who have instance and is a kind of relationship that is called as general importance fine that is what is called um, important attributes that's the first issue in knowledge representation we need to identify which are the important attributes second is relationship among objects so there are many ways to represent the relationship between any object so what is a relationship between uh, attributes of the object is it is independent of a specific knowledge they encode and may hold properties like inverses, existence, techniques and style valued attributes. Okay. So inverses is one of them and in existence is a hierarchy of generalization, specialization and techniques for reasoning about the values specifying uh, constraints which is our data types. Single valued attributes height cannot be two values. That is what a uh, single valued attribute. So all you have to remember is while uh, considering the relationship among attributes you have to um, mention these four things inversing means if this object is related to this object it will obviously be related in backward manner as well because then only the relationship is established right and existing uh, existence is an is a hierarchy okay existence means it is a is a hierarchy which is general uh, generalization specialization so if there is a school inside that school there are many classes which class are you studying in this is generalization you're studying in this school the specific class is the specialization that is what is called existence is a uh, is an is a hierarchy okay third one is techniques for reasoning about values so specifying the constraints which is the data type constraints that is the uh, techniques for um, reasoning the values like for example if you tell uh, i have a data and you don't specify what type of data it is then it is a uh, very vague data right you have to uh, specify what type of data it is that is what is called the uh, specifying constraint data type and techniques for reasoning about the values the last one is single attributed values suppose that uh, someone asks you what is your height you cannot say i'm one meter and two meter and three meter also you have to choose uh, one value and that will be a constant for your height at that moment of time right so that is the four things the relationship among the attributes should satisfy these four conditions then choosing granularity granularity is the third thing granularity means it is uh, it means just the scale okay what level should the knowledge be represented and what are the primitives okay what knowledge what level should the knowledge be represented and what are the primitives that is the two things you have to define in granularity okay should there be a small number of uh, or uh, should there be a large number of low level primitives or high level facts okay so uh, a, a large number of low level uh, things should be there or a small number of high level things should be there okay that is the first thing and second thing is uh, high level facts may be not adequate for inference while low level may require a lot of storage see low level will have specific values right low level means specific values of each of those things but if you take a large number of them you'll get a, a definite result but it will cause a lo uh, large storage space but if you just consider a very vague value high value at that time uh, this generalizes uh, what is the average of all of this for example but this will take very um very not no, much near to the actual answer it will be very vague value that is the two things inside granularity granularity means nothing but scale if you take very low scale it will require a large number of values if you uh, take a very high scale it will be very rough value not exact value okay so examples of uh, granularity suppose that there are uh, there are two persons okay john and sue john spotted sue this can be represented as spotted who john what he uh, spotted the object is sue here so like that you can represent here such a representation would neither uh, be easy to answer the questions like who spotted sue okay by using this one it is not uh, that easy to understand um, who sp uh, spotted so in ai it will not be uh, easily able to um, make out whether this makes sense or not by uh, looking uh, we all obviously know who spotted you uh, jo uh, john spotted you we can easily tell but while we actually try to implement this in ai it will not be possible okay so that we will get to know in the upcoming chapters okay suppose we want to know uh, like did john see you given only one fact we cannot discover that we need to have other facts also like if they have spotted then obviously they saw also 
if this is also given along with the previous condition then only we will be able to do so after uh, discussing all of this i'll be telling you what are the key points in each of this you need to write an exam for now just listen the um, explanation so set of objects means what suppose that you have all cars here okay different cars are there and you have uh, different uh, clothes here so all these belong to one set and this also belongs to one set like that many different things are there they belong to different sets instead of individually representing i have blue car i have red car i have big blue car i have big black car like that individually representing you can represent you have cars for the clothes also it is uh, same you have clothes now, uh, now uh, to represent this as a single entity instead of individually representing see the uh, concept is here in instead of individually representing things you'll uh, represent this as a whole as one right the whole entity you'll represent as one that is what is called the set of objects okay for that we'll be using universal quantifier okay also the inheritance everything will be done here so let me explain you what it is like uh, for example we'll be using this symbol here for all for all x where sun uh, planet and x belongs to that uh, means wherever you are if you are living in a sun planet and you are a human and uh, that means that you are living on earth like that okay means sun planet is all the planets in the solar system inside that if you are a human and you are living in a sun planet then that is earth because in no other planet humans are living right that is what is called uh, this type of set of objects all the set of objects of human are uh, means con uh, contracted in this small sentence right so that's what uh, it is uh, called as set of objects if they have explicit uh, means um, see here if it is more efficient to associate it with one object set rather than to associate explicitly with every element of the set instead of associating with every element we can take that whole element as one uh, set and that we can define that is what is called set of objects okay like this uh, thing needs to be done that is the issue in representation finally moving on finding uh, finding the right structure just few uh, steps are there how to perform the initial selection how to fill in appropriate details how to find better structure what to do if none of the structure is appropriate and how what to create and remember a new structure when to create and remember a new structure that is uh last question uh, we need to ask now coming to how you need to write an exam what are the things you need to remember okay so how do you remember this one is you have to remember that uh, you are a murderer okay <clears throat> you are a murderer and there is a person here you, what you did is this person has some attributes good attributes as well as bad attributes okay what you did is you cut this person into half and you uh, took his head off and uh, mean separated it and the rest of the body separated here okay so uh, you did these things and uh, then what you will be doing is you will be packing this in a separate thing packing this also in a separate thing and then you will be storing it somewhere okay then what you will be doing you will st be storing this in a structure if you can take a screenshot of this uh, picture in your mind then it will be very helpful for you to answer this question now the thing is the person has good attributes as well as bad attributes right but the person is same so what the important attributes of the person is what are the important uh, good attributes you have that's the first thing second thing is that since the person is same it will have the relationship between the uh, bad attributes and the good attributes as well right so that is the second point relationship among attributes these two things you have to remember important attributes are the good attributes and the relationship uh, is also there with the bad attributes okay then uh, choosing granularity granularity means levels so you separated the head this is in the top level and you separated the body this is in the lower level choosing the granularity whether head you want or you want the rest of the body that is choosing granularity the, the next is the set of objects you have packed this in something right this also have packed in something this is one set of object which is heads and this is one set of object which is bodies okay and finding a right structure to place these two things inside it that is what is called um, the issues in representation okay so in this way if you remember you'll get the key points here now let me explain you what are the key points after in each of these important attributes just remember two things is a uh, and instance is i uh, and instance are two general uh, important things relationship among attributes these four key points you have to remember inverse existence techniques for uh, reasoning and single value attributes okay just remember these four things it should be sufficient for you granularity low level facts more or high level facts one this will represent very rough value this will take a uh, large storage that's the issue here then um, moving on we have the set of objects a set of objects means if they are all connected with each other we can take it as a set instead of taking individually okay that's what you have to know uh, you uh, right here and for that we'll be using universal quantifier lastly you have to find the right structure choose the initial uh, selection and appropriate details to fill in that which is a better structure you try to find out if none of the uh, structure is appropriate then create a new structure that's all if there is not, uh, none of the structure which can fit the head and the body then create a new structure by using wood or something and uh, put those uh, body parts inside that wood okay so that's all uh, what is there in the knowledge representation let's move on to the next question 
this is the next topic which is the heart of module 2 okay this uh, topic is the heart of module 2 and very super important question from exam point of view so <clears throat> before going on to the question part you need to understand what are the basic concepts used here because if you are not uh, clear with the basics you will be uh, finding it very hard to understand the actual questions okay so make sure you know the basics very well in predicate logic we have two things here okay propositional logic and predicate logic sounds similar but there is a subtle difference between them so if i tell you something like 7 is greater than 5 that is what is called a statement you know uh, for sure that this is true so whenever you have a value which for sure you know the uh, you know that it is true or it is false okay it might be even false like 5 is greater than 7 these are false statement these are true statement but for sure you know that this is true and false statement unlike x is greater than 5 this can be either true either false you don't know the value of x it depends on x whether it will be true or false so this is ambiguous right so whatever is not ambiguous like this is not ambiguous this is not ambiguous that is called as propositional logic what is a statement which you for sure know that it is true or false that is called as propositional logic okay it might it must be either true or false coming to predicate logic it is an expression it does not have to be true or false and um, but its value exists in some domain like for example p of x is equal to x is greater than 5 this value x can fill anything here and based on that it can be either true or false and the x can be like for example integers or just the whole numbers natural numbers real numbers irrational numbers like that any value can be present here okay that is what is called predicate logic so these two uh, subtle differences you need to know okay after that we have some symbols that uh, we'll be using much like for example this is called as for all like for example if you have a box of oranges okay so how you will represent that in predicate logic logic for you what you'll write for all x like uh, this is how you read okay for all x then you'll write o of x o of x means oranges uh, in the box x okay like that you'll define for all x that means oranges in box x this is the thing which you'll be using here for all and if you have a box and inside that box you thought that many oranges are there but the shopkeeper made you full and you just have one orange inside that then you will use this one okay there exist this is called there exist x such that uh, there is an um, orange in the box uh, uh, orange box there is one orange at least one orange in the orange box okay that is what is called uh, there exist then implies means if it is uh, sunny then obviously it means that it is hot outside not or an and you already know and these are the symbols used in this okay so we have some variables and universal quantifications for example this is called as universal qualification for all x cat x uh, for all uh, cats it is a mammal means all the cats are mammals we know that how to represent that using um, predicate logic for that we'll be using universal qualification Identifier for all x for all x cat of x uh, then if it is cat of x then it is mammal of x for sure or cats are mammals that will represent like this for all x if it is cat of x then it is mammal of x this is how you read it then for all x father of bill comma x how, you, how I told you you should read this one bill is the father of x like this you will read okay bill is the father of x if bill is the father of x then hilary is the mother of x fine these are the parents of x bill, uh, bill and hilary okay so like that you will represent um, the things in predicate logic by using uh, universal quantification this is called as universal quantific uh, quantif uh, quantification what about existential quantification existential means at least one should exist without uh, being zero okay like for example there exist one cat and also it is mean there is a mean cat like that you can say okay there exist one cat which is mean like that there exists um, one person who is the father of uh, x named as bill and there is one person who is um, the mother of x which is hilary so what is uh, the thing there is a kid whose father is bill and whose mother is hilary okay that's what we'll be using in the existential uh, quantification okay then we have nested qual qualification in nested qualification we'll be using two or more things okay we'll be using what two or more things here like for example for all x comma y parent of x comma y means child of y comma x how I, how you should read this one x is the parent of y then that means that y is the child of x obviously x is the parent of y then what does that mean y is the child of whom x only right so how you'll read this one nested means you'll use both okay like for all also and existential also both you'll be using mixed way okay so here what you have for all x there exist one y this is how you read for all x there exist one y such that x loves y for all x there exist one y such that x loves y okay so x is a person for all x like uh, for example for all humans there is a y for all uh, humans there is a person who um, x loves y means x loves that person for every every person loves someone that's what i can say every person x loves someone who is y okay 
another one uh, for all x past x of x or there exist one x shoot uh, div of x. I don't know what this means, but still the thing uh, logically it, uh, is valid for all x. Either he will pass the tech, uh, test or there exist one x such that shoot div x will happen. Okay, so uh, shoot div means uh, div will get shooted. I guess it uh, means that. Okay, either he will pass the test or he will shoot div. Okay, so senseless thing, but still the object uh, means the logical logically you understood it right so this was about uh, the different kinds of data representations <clears throat> then we have uh, functions function nothing but like for example father of x like that you will represent using bracket right we are already using bracket that is uh, nothing but functions okay for example how do you write functions for all x equal x comma x how you should read this one x is equal to x obviously for all x x is equal to x right and equal factorial 0 comma 1 for all uh, means factorial of 0 is equal to 1 like uh, right that's the true thing factorial of 0 is equal to 1 that's the thing you have to represent using functions factorial of 0 is obviously equal to 1 so that's how you represent what is the uh, function you need to perform and the value is uh, given here okay so that was about the functions and how to represent uh, facts using predicate logic here is an interesting example given where you have a marcus marcus was a man who was a pompeian and all pompeians were romans okay pompeian is a city i guess inside rome so um, marcus was a man and he was a pompeian and all pompeians are romans caesar was a ruler who was caesar caesar was the ruler at that time okay means ruling the country and all uh, romans are either uh, loyal to caesar or hated him so for example there are many people standing here all of these people either love caesar or hate caesar either will uh, love caesar or hate caesar that's what's happening here and i'll be explaining you how to write this ones after the explanation of what is the um, thing about everyone is loyal to someone there is someone whom everyone is loyal to everyone is loyal to someone okay like it not need not be the same person everyone is at least loyal to one person like uh, that's what it means okay and people only uh, try to assassinate rulers they are not loyal to there's a ruler who is uh, there's a ruler and there's a person the person is not loyal to the ruler so he tries to assassinate if the person is loyal obviously he will not associate uh, not um assassinate marcus tried to assassinate caesar marcus was a person caesar was a ruler marcus was not loyal to this one so only he tried to assassinate caesar then uh, after these things are given in the exam you could be asked to prove that Pro uh, prove marcus is not loyal to caesar by backward substitution this is a sub question like for example the question will be given by backward substitution by resolution proof i'll be discussing this in upcoming topic but for now let's see what is backward substitution okay like that many topics are there here now uh, if they ask you to prove by using a backward substitution you have to use you have to write in this way okay so what is this how you need to write before that you need to write, uh, know how to write the predicate logic these are just the sentences given what i told you if the sentences are given you to write in it in predicate logic you'll be writing it in this form right man will be written here then in bracket you'll write what is the name of the man marcus was the man so you'll write man marcus then marcus was a pompian pompian marcus all pompians were romans whenever uh, you get the all what i told you you have to use for all x for all x if it is a pompian then it's a roman all pompians were romans all who were romans all pompians were romans so pompian of x implies that uh, x is roman caesar was a ruler ruler caesar and all romans were either loyal to caesar or uh, hated him okay so all x all romans are given so roman of x is loyal to caesar how you'll uh, read this one x is loyal to caesar or x hates caesar that's what is given to you all uh, either loyal to caesar or hated him next is everyone is loyal to someone for all x everyone is represented by for all x loyal to someone someone is given means there exists one y such that x is loyal to y okay x such that x is loyal to y people only try to assassinate rulers they are not loyal to people only try to assassinate rulers they are not loyal to so <clears throat> people can include all the people right it's talking about all the people so all the people and all the rulers person x and ruler y so there is a person x there is also a ruler y and if they try to assassinate means x tries to assassinate y person is x and ruler is y x tries to assassinate y at that time what it implies x is not loyal to y this is not loyal right x is not loyal to whom y x is not loyal to y marcus tried to assassinate caesar try associate marcus caesar marcus tries to associate caesar uh, caesar so this is how you represent marcus try assassinate caesar okay then uh, we have to prove that Marcus is not loyal to Caesar. See if this question is given, first thing you have to see is prove that Marcus, 
note down where all markers came in the above sentences is not loyal to caesar wherever not loyal came note down wherever caesar came no, uh, note down so not loyal markers caesar where it came not loyal x is markers y caesar this came here so pick up this one and x will be home marcus is not loyal to caesar right so x will be what marcus and y will be what caesar marcus is not loyal to caesar so x will be home marcus and y will be home caesar so that's what we'll be writing here not loyal to marcus comma caesar and then we'll be coming back here and where we got this from this is implied by which sentence this is implied by this whole sentence so this we got after this one right so we'll be writing this one instead of this one so if this is true obviously this has to be true so i can write instead of this i can write directly this one isn't it so i'll be writing the same thing here person ruler try assassinate and substitute the values of x and y this is x this is y wherever you find x in the above sentence you'll have to substitute by x wherever you find y you have to substitute by y after i've written this one i told that this is true if this is true means this is also supposed to be true and there is and operator in between so it means that each of these is true right and what we have to prove we have to prove that marcus is not loyal to caesar so what i have to uh, prove is not loyal i have proved marcus uh, is uh, not loyal to caesar who is not loyal Mar Marcus is not loyal so i have to prove that right so what i will do if these three are true obviously this uh, this is true and this is true uh, collectively so if these both are true i can uh, directly write this is true if this is true obviously means this and this both are true so since i am concerned with marcus i'll be writing here marcus very simple the first thing you have to see is what is given not loyal to caesar just go where it is written not loyal substitute this one from where it came that you have to substitute here when you substitute that you will get uh, three sentences keep on eliminating each one and the truth value should remain and it remains as in our case so what at the last we have to uh, get is what they have asked in the question okay prove that marcus is not loyal fine so that's what about the uh, question which is proof marcus is not loyal to caesar by backward substitution backward substitution means you have to start from the back and move till the front fine so that's all uh, about the um, how do you do a um, backward substitution there is another method which is computable uh, predicates how do you add computable predicates for that you need to understand this another example here very similar example here it is same man Mar uh, marcus pompeian marcus marcus was born in 40 ad here we'll be adding computable predicates computable means in each of these case if you observe carefully there was nothing to compute here all the facts were given like they were romans it was a pompeian marcus was a man he was a ruler either loyal not loyal there was nothing to compute here but if you want to compute something that i'll be telling you how to do for instance consider marcus was born in which year 40 ad okay born marcus comma 40 will be written here marcus was born in 40 ad all men are mortal every person will die one day right for all you'll be writing like this all men are mortal so men of x if the person is x then the person will die right so uh, that's what it is written here uh, men of x then it implies mortal of x all men are mortal all Pompeians died when the volcano was erupted in 79 AD. All is written here. So uh, before uh, thinking anything, I've tried for all X. Who is given for all Pompeian? If it's Pompeian of X, then died in uh, 79. 79 AD, uh, the Pompeians died. X died in 79. Like that, when it is written here, X died in 79. Due to what uh, the Pompeians died? Uh, the volcano eruption. When it happened in 79 AD. So volcano erupted in 79. Volcano erupted in what? 79. And these two are connected by and because these both are true. Pompeians also died, and it, uh, the volcano was also erupted in uh, 79. 9 AD okay and another question uh, no mortal lives uh, longer than 50 years here comes the computable predicates no mortal lives longer than 150 years so if suppose uh, now now it is 2022 okay in next year it will become 2023 next year it will become 2024 so the year is not constant here so if we just write one single statement it will be valid for one particular year if you want a sentence which is valid for all particular years it should be relative statement right so that uh, it will be applicable whichever year i uh, enter here that will compute accordingly and give the result here so that's what i have to do here that computable thing i have to write here that computable thing is nothing uh, but our subtraction right so uh, no mortal lives uh, longer than one Yes, how can we represent for all x x is a set of people for all x for all t1 and for all t2 t1 and t2 are nothing but when the person was born and when the person was dead all the years is given here these two are the years and this is the person mortal x if the person is mortal and it was uh, he was born in x okay means x was born in t1 so x when he was born t1 and greater than t2 
टी टू माइनस टी वन इज वन फिफ्टी टी टू मीन्स डाइड इन दैट ईयर ओके टी टू इज द डेथ ऑफ डेथ ईयर ऑफ एक्स सो दिस इज द डेथ दिस इज द बर्थ नाउ टी टू माइनस टी वन आई एम डूइंग टी टू माइनस टी वन विल गिव मी सम वैल्यू आई दर इट विल बी ग्रेटर दैन वन फिफ्टी और लेस दैन वन फिफ्टी दैट इज द एज हियर लाइक द डेथ एंड माइनस द बर्थ दैट इज नथिंग बट द एज इफ द एज इज ग्रेटर दैन और लेसर दैन वन फिफ्टी दैट इज द थिंग एंड द फंक्शन इज डिफाइंड एज ग्रेटर दैन T2 टी टू माइनस टी वन टी टू माइनस टी वन इज नथिंग बट डेथ माइनस बर्थ दिस शुड बी ग्रेटर दैन वन फिफ्टी इफ दिस इज ट्रू एंड दैट टाइम ओनली वी कैन इम्प्लाई दैट द पर्सन डाइड सी इफ दिस इज ट्रू मीन्स दिस ऑल शुड बी ट्रू देर इज नो चॉइस दैट दिस विल बिकम फॉल्स एंड दिस विल बिकम ट्रू देन इट्स नॉट वैलिड इफ दिस इज ट्रू मीन्स दिस ऑल शुड बी ट्रू दिस ऑल शुड बी ट्रू मीन्स द पर्सन शुड बी मॉर्टल द पर्सन इज बॉर्न इन टी वन एंड द टी टू इज द करेंट डेट एंड माइनस टी वन इफ यू डू दैट शुड बी ग्रेटर दैन वन फिफ्टी एंड इफ ऑल दिस आर ट्रू देन दिस विल ऑल्सो बी ट्रू So that's what no mortal lives longer than fifty years is uh, represented as follows. If you write this in a uh, practice, then only you'll get in mind. It's now one nine nineteen ninety one. So suppose that now it is nineteen ninety one. Okay. So uh, now is equal to nineteen ninety one. That means that um, we'll be assigning a variable now which has the value nineteen ninety one. Alive means not dead. Alive means what? Not dead. For all x for all t. T is the year and x is the person. Alive x comma t. X is alive in t. If x is alive in a year t, then what does that mean? He is not dead. X is not dead in uh, the year t. X is not dead in year t. And if x is not dead in year t, that implies x is alive in t. Just the reverse of these two things are given. Okay, so if any case if we consider, it should be same. So that was about alive means not dead. Then at last we have uh, if someone dies, then he is dead at all later times. If a person dies, obviously a person died in two thousand twenty-two. He will be dead in two thousand twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and so on. Right. So the person is dead at all later times. So how we will represent this one? X uh, for all x for all t one and for all t two died x at t one means x died in t one year greater than means. If t two is greater than t one and x died in t one, that means that dead x t two. Suppose that T1 is 2019. If a person died in 2019, then uh, now it is 2022. Let's consider this as T1, this as T2. So greater than T2 uh, or T1 is T2 greater than T1? T2 is greater than T1. So this is true. And X died in 2019. Yes, this is true. If these two are true, then obviously it means X is dead in T2. X is dead in T2 means X is dead in 2022. So that is implied like X is dead in 2022. Given that X died in 2019 and uh, 2022 is greater than 2019. Given these rules, you have to prove the following. Prove that Marcus is dead now. Now it is 2022. We obviously know all the Pompeians died in uh, 79 AD. Now it is 2022. It is greater than uh, 2000. Uh, Uh, 79 AD. So all the Pompeians died. No one lives more than uh, 150 years. There are two ways of proving. One, a volcano erupted. So the Pompeians died. We can prove, and it is more than 150 years from 79 AD to uh, 2022. So in this way also we can prove. So one of the way we will be using. So we'll be starting from here. What we have to prove? Marcus is dead now. Dead means not alive. Not alive. Marcus comma now. Now where you can find this one? Not alive. Marcus comma now. Here we can find right. Mar. Uh, not alive. Marcus comma now. So if we take this one, not alive, then it means dead x comma t. Right. Dead. Uh, Marcus comma now. By this I can uh, bring out this one. Now where do you find um, dead uh, Marcus comma now? Dead Marcus comma now is uh, found here. Died Marcus comma now. And greater than greater than mean t two comma t one t t one is nothing but um, when the um, Marcus died at that uh, time. Okay, see here <clears throat> we are not sure uh, what time it is. Okay, so died Marcus comma t one Marcus died in t one and now it is greater than t one. Now whatever is the year is greater than t one. Okay, so Marcus uh, died in t one and now it is greater than t one. So uh, this is what uh, will be having the um, substitution. Okay, then uh, we have uh, Pompey and Marcus. Now how we got this uh, substitution back here is, see here Pompey and Marcus and greater than uh, now comma seventy nine. Okay, so just we are making a substitution. This is present here. Right. By this we can write died Marcus comma t one. How we can write is, see here. We have this. By using this we can write this as well because if this is true, this is also meant to be true. Right. Greater than t two comma t one. Okay. So uh, died Marcus comma t one and greater than now comma t one. Now is greater than t one. T one means when Marcus died. Now by using these two we have to get uh, this one Pompeian comma Marcus. How do you, how do we get this one is? In the second, uh, we have Marcus was a Pompeian, right? So obviously we can write it as Pompeian Marcus, 
right so by that only we have written here marcus comma now so uh, marcus comma t1 so mark uh, pompian is a marcus is a pompian and greater than now comma 79 79 is t1 when the uh, volcano erupted so obviously uh, greater than now uh, 71 is true why because now it is 20 uh, it is uh, 1991 as of the given question 1991 is greater than 79 and that is true that means you'll be reaching the conclusion that whatever the given statement it is true so if and even if you did not get it's okay i'll be explaining more questions in detail at that time you'll get to know what it actually means okay so this was the basic knowledge regarding the um predicate logic next will be um, moving on to the topic which is resolution a super important question from exam point of view resolution is the most asked question we will be seeing what it is okay in resolution there are uh, totally three topics and the most important one is the second topic which is unification algorithm okay unification algorithm is a super important topic now if we done with uh, these three topics then the half module will be done after that one uh, topic is remaining that we'll be doing in a separate video okay so uh, in resolution what happens is a procedure to prove a statement so if you want to prove that um, the color is red here okay so you'll be following some procedures you'll be comparing with some objects which everyone knows that the object is red so you'll be comparing the color with this one and you'll be telling this color is red there is a procedure to prove something a resolution also does the same thing it proves a statement okay so how does it exactly prove that i'll be di directly going to the example and then i'll be coming to the algorithm as well and explaining you what these what do these terms mean okay so um first let's uh, see an example okay so the algorithm is written here and uh, before that also you need to know how to convert things into clause form and then apply the example let's directly go to the example first because a picture is better than a thousand words right if you see the example you will get to know 90 percent of the things so these things are given to us what is given p is given p and q uh, implies r s or t implies q and t is given these uh, four things are given to us four sentences they have asked us to convert them into clause form the first thing is you have to convert them into what clause form and prove that r is true r is true we have to prove means r is the value is true that we have to prove here now let's see how to do that first you have to convert this into clause form that also i'll be explaining you clause form is nothing but you have to just remove this implies to remove clause form uh, to convert into clause form if it, something is given like a um, implies b how you will convert this not a or b this both are equivalent right these both are equivalent we have already studied this one a implies b can be equally uh, written as not a or b right in the same way wherever you have the arrow here that will be uh, removing it okay and after we remove the arrow for example i'll do this here itself p will remain same t will remain same here two arrows are there so we have to remove these arrows when we remove these arrows what it will become p and q not of p and q or r this is what answer we will get when we will remove the implies right now what we have is not p and q or r now to take this inside what we have to do is we have to remove the um this symbol here replace it with or and do the and for both these and we have to write this one this is the equivalent answer for this one right that's what we have written here okay that's what we have written here okay in the same way we will be doing this one also and we'll be writing the answer here after we have got this one then what we'll be doing we have uh, successfully converted it into clause form our first answer is done convert into clause form prove r is true r is true means what we'll start from just r we just write what r okay so uh sorry we'll not write r they have asked us to prove that r is true we will consider r as false and prove it as contradiction if we consider it as um false then we prove that it as a contradiction that means this was wrong assumption if this is wrong assumption means the opposite of this is true which means r is true will be proven so we'll take first not r so we'll write here not r and we'll be seeing where all we can find not r not r can be um not r can be found nowhere here instead what we can find is r so we have to just choose those things which are a uh, contradiction with what we have considered for example if you have considered not r here you have to search those things which has a contradiction means r is given here right r is given here now if you uh, mix these both whatever was with r that also you have to consider okay so if we mix these both what will happen this and this will get cancelled and just this will remain this is the procedure first they have asked us to prove r is true that was the first step what you will do you'll search not r wherever you get not r means uh, you will consider not r and write here and you will search the opposite of this opposite of this is nothing but what is asked in the question r r we will search wherever we get r along with that whatever is there that you have to write here after you have done this much then this and this will cancel what will remain with is not p or not q 
not p or not q will be writing here now either you can search um, not p's uh, reverse or uh, not q's reverse means either you can search q or p in which equation you can find either q or p you can find p here right so you can use this one not p uh, or not q you have written and p you will consider here then this and this will get cancelled only not q will remain so not q will remain here then you will search where is a q q is here right so what you will do if q is here you can consider this one and also it's equivalently written as either you can consider t or you can consider s right so you have to carefully choose this option either you can choose not s or we can choose not t if we choose not s anyways we can uh, prove that s is contradiction no we cannot prove but if we choose a not t here we have another t here like that you have to see and do what i mean is you'll understand see here you have got not q so q where you found q was with two places q was with uh, uh, not s and q was with not t so i took q with not t for instance now what happened this and this got cancelled and i have not t here not t also i wrote here and t i have here when i have t and not t i can use both uh, and i'll be writing here and this both will become null if you reach null then your uh, first assumption was contradiction and the ulta of that one will be true means contradiction was not r so r will be true see we had considered this one it reached null so it means this is false the reverse of this is true which is r is true like that we have to do okay so more examples will be uh, there so you'll be understanding this one so if you did not get you can rewind this and watch okay so this is the basic concept behind resolution okay so coming to the theory now you'll be getting uh, easily what the theory means here what we did it is a procedure to prove a statement we are proving a statement right so that's a procedure resolution attempts to show that a negation of statements gives contradiction with the known statements negation of a statement which we want to prove we want to prove r is true we take negation of a statement it gives contradiction which means last we got uh, not t and t both get cancelled nothing remains that's a contradiction with the known statements this is a contradiction with the known statement that means that uh, this is false and this is true okay so first uh, the algorithm goes as follows whatever i did that's by following the algorithm so it has eight steps first we need to convert the clause form how to convert into clause form eliminate the implies relation very very find arrow that you have to implement that's also uh, the same thing what i did right a implies b can be written as not a uh, or b right same thing if the uh, equation is given uh, to you as this one okay this, this is the equation uh, given to you you have to convert this equation sorry for example um, where is the actual equation okay so the actual equation is not this one but uh see the actual equation is this one okay i like that okay see this is the actual equation roman x and no x comma marcus implies this whole thing this much only is given now we have to convert this into uh, by using this one so a implies b can be written as not a or b so not a is nothing but not of a or b not of a or b so this is converted by like uh, the first thing is done eliminate the implies relation next thing is reduce the scope of each not to a single term means not of not b can be written as p not of a or b can be written as not a and not b not of a and b can be written as not a or not b so that's what we are reducing the scope of this to a single term okay and the first thing is then eliminate the implies relation and reduce the scope of each to a single term and the same thing we'll be doing here as well so see here if you observe carefully here it was outside a and b not of a and b that can be written as not of a or not of b not of a or not of b that's what it is written here if it was here also that uh, the, the here also will be doing the same thing okay so what it was here not of uh, head z or think crazy so we'll be taking that inside and uh, writing it as follows which is not of head uh, head x or I think so hit x uh, for just for this one it was there it was not for the whole thing so only we have taken here if it was for the whole bracket like for example if it was like this then if you have taken this inside what it will be not of hit x and this will become and and this will become not of think crazy okay by using the um d morgan's law if you take the this one inside the and will become or and the positive term will become on um false terms okay so that's what we are reducing into a single form by using these three formulas after you have done that one standardize the variable so that each quantifier binds to a unique value so for, for example if it is given here for all x p of x or 
for all x q of x now this x is uh, exclusive for this one this x is exclusive for this one by seeing we can understand this one like this was separate uh, domains right so here once we are considering the x uh, variable again we are considering the same variable with a different domain but since to avoid confusions what you can do is you can just write for all x p of x or all y q of y now it will create no confusion that we have to standardize the variable so that each quantifier binds to a unique variable the first step is move all quantifiers to the left of the formula without changing the relative order means as you can see here there are some uh, terms here right this one is here and this one is here move everything to the left without changing the relative order so how it will look like is this one for example if it was just p and uh, q it will be for uh, some x there exists uh, x and y uh, such that this thing is there inside this there will be nothing all the things will be moved um, here okay so whatever was present here with the height that also came here everything came here preserving the relative order okay then what you have to do element eliminate existential quantifiers we can eliminate the quantifier what is existential quantifier this type this we have to what eliminate by substituting a variable for the reference function okay this is very important we'll be substituting this by a function for example what does this term mean for uh, there exists some y such that y is the president that implies president is s1 okay like that instead of uh, this one what we can write is just president of s1 for all x there exists a y for that what we can write is father of y comma x it's given like this right so what we can write is we have to just eliminate this one this will remain it's not a problem just you have to eliminate this one for that we'll be using a function wherever you find y you'll be writing a function instead so father y comma x is there right instead of y you'll write s2 of s s2 of s will give us y this is a function defined we have uh, just uh, mentioned the name here it's not yet defined okay so whatever you see here like president s1 s2 of s that is called as uh, scolem function okay whatever function you use inside the bracket that is called scolem function that was the fifth step the sixth step is to drop the prefix prefix means we have used these things right these things we have to drop okay so it will just look uh, look up your sentence without the existential or universal quantifiers okay then you have to convert the matrix into conjunction of disjunctions by using some laws we'll be uh, just simplifying it for example see here if it is given like uh, not of this or not of this or this or this or this so it's just or no laws will be applied if there was some law it would have been applied but since uh, since there is no law it's just all or in between we'll be just moving on ahead with the same thing okay so that's what we'll be writing here then we'll be uh, creating a separate clause corresponding to each conduct for a well formed formula to be true all the clauses that are generated from it must be true this you need not pay much attention to and standardize the apart variables from the set of classes generate separate uh, rename the variables so that no two clauses make reference to the same variable so all should have different variables uh, in them if we are referring to different sets this will be understanding more in the upcoming topic fine <clears throat> so that's what uh, it's uh, present here and we'll be uh, doing one example using actual uh, type of question that could be asked in exam convert the statements to clause forms okay so the um, things are given here we have to convert this into clause form by applying the above algorithm so how do we do that man of marcus will remain same pompian marcus will remain same here for all is there you have to remove this one also implies is there you have to remove this one what it will be pompian of x will be not pompian of x or roman of x it will be like that okay so that's what i've written here not pompian of x or roman of x okay so since it's the same thing x1 so i've written here as x1 so why because the scope of x is for all of this so this will also be x1 this will also be same x1 only rule series is same here what we have here we have um this you have to remove and this you have to remove not roman of x or loyal to x caesar or hates x caesar so that's what we'll be writing here not roman of x loyal to x to caesar hate x to caesar based on that by if we come to different domains we'll be changing the variable that was the ninth step right next uh what we have is loyal to uh i guess yeah here uh right yeah so here what we have um yeah for all x there exist y such that loyal to x comma y now see here there is an existential quantifier you have to remove this one wherever is y you have to replace with a function so this y will be replaced with function that's all sixth answer will be just replacing it with a function loyal to x3 and function of x3 that's all just replace y with function of x next we have the seventh one in the seventh one for all x for all y person x ruler y try assassinate y and then implies is there and this is present here okay so this all will be there then or will be there not of this all then or will be there and not of this one
okay so by just the same rule we are applying here not of this one this one this one you're taking the knot inside see how it was okay i think i'm going fast so let me slow down a bit see here this is there first remove this there's no existential quantifier means this is universal universal just ignore this one here as you can see and 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 three things are connected by and then we have implies then we have some statement here if this is connected by and there is an imply here this whole thing will be taken as not of this or this so not of this means what let's take it as x this as y this as z they are connected by and not of this eliminate this one so it will be or loyal so taking not inside will be not x or not y or not z okay so that's what not x not y or not z um or not l this thing will be the answer then we have the last one which is try assassinate marcus caesar this is given to us try assassinate marcus caesar that will be same because it does not violate any rule fine so this is how you convert into clause form so if you did not get you can rewind this and watch again now you can understand what is the um logic we applied first we have what we have to do we have to convert into clause form second we have to apply the algorithm Algo algorithm was what we uh, are coming to the same example here we will consider a statement here and we will consider the contradictory of this one and we will try to eliminate these both and then we will move on ahead until we reach an empty state if we reach empty state that means our uh, uh, assumption was false and its contradiction is true our assumption was false its contradiction is r so it is true that will be proved same thing we will be doing here convert all propositions to the clause form that's the first step negate p whatever we have to do negate that one if you have to con uh, prove r negate that one and convert the result to the clause form convert the result to clause form it's already in clause form add to the set of clauses obtained in uh, step, uh, step one so this will be added to the uh, set of clauses obtained in step one so this is the first clause repeat until either a contradiction is found or no progress can be made means this um, contradiction what is the contradiction of this r if you find any r in the clause then we have to consider that one like for example in our case it was p or q or r so this will be considering okay so after we have selected that one p it was actually not p or not q or r and the second one was not r right this uh, these two things only were there right so see here these two things only were there this is one clause this is another clause now we have to what we have to do um select two clauses call the parent clauses resolve them together eliminate l and uh, not l instead of l we have r so we'll eliminate these both if the resolvent is empty clause means after eliminating these two if it is empty then it's contradiction at the last that only happened right see after eliminating these both it's empty that means it's a contradiction if it is not empty okay if uh, found uh, contradiction is found if not empty then add to the set of clauses the uh, remainder of the procedure what we have to add the remainder means if it is not empty means after eliminating these two it's not empty what you have to add is the remainder remainder is this one so we'll be adding this one again we'll be doing same thing find a contradiction remove again add the remainder find a contradiction remove again add the remainder until if we reach the null then it is contradiction if you don't reach null and we can't do anything further that means it's not a contradiction now there is a um, way to make this a bit more simpler what we are actually trying to do is see in the step one we'll be uh, trying to uh, write this here and we are finding out its contradiction right means r we are trying to find out to do uh, to do this there is a recursive uh, method which is called unification algorithm this is the heart of module two unification algorithm is a super important question this algorithm is a sure shot a very important question from exam point of view okay not r how to find r this is uh, done by unification algorithm okay so here again i'll be Go, coming to the algorithm later what is the unification algorithm how it works what are the key points first i'll discuss the example so suppose that the example is given here okay hate x comma y hate marcus comma z okay how i can read this one x hates y how i can read this one marcus hates z so uh, let's write x hate y marcus hates z now z can be interchanged with y right because this format is same x hates y marcus hates z so x can also hate y uh, means marcus can hate y also marcus can be written as x both can be done x hates z x hates y marcus hates y marcus hates z all those can be written so these are the substitutions i will make observe carefully how i am writing marcus or x this can be interchanged 
y or z this can be interchanged z or y y or z or if there is any other person like any other clause which has caesar in it or polonius Polon in it so you can use that as well so this is what is called unification algorithm this should be same the name should be same and this uh, number of arguments should be same so that this will be interchanged with this one this will be interchanged with this one also the variable can be interchanged with constant and the variable can be changed with a variable but a constant cannot be changed with constant hit for example here it was allen hit allen comma y allen cannot be changed with marcus allen hits all y marcus hits all z allen and uh, marcus are constants there to there too cannot be changed this is only what is written in the algorithm as well so let's uh, see one of the example then i'll come to the uh, algorithm then it will be more easier for you to understand suppose that we have to unify p x y y with p a z b okay two things are given to us we have to unify this one means if you observe carefully x can be interchanged with a y can be interchanged with z y can be interchanged with small b three things can be interchanged let's go step by step initially e is this one p x y is equal to p a z b the first uh, time through the while loop e becomes what x will be ma mapped with a y will be mapped with uh, z and y will map with b so this is the answer which will be writing in the first trail suppose that x is equal to a is selected any of this you can select so suppose that this you selected so if you select this one x is equal to a then what does s become s is the final set this is the initial set this is the final set s will become x or a means x can be replaced with a then e becomes what this one and this one means we have eliminated one of them now y will become z that if we consider y is equal to z is selected then y will be replaced with z in s and e will become what x or a or y or z now since y can become z the e will remain what z is equal to b it was written y is equal to b but we have already written um, y can be interchanged with z so i'll write this as instead of y is equal to b since it's already defined we can write it as z z is equal to b will be taken and finally i'll be writing x is equal x or a y or b z or b and e becomes empty when e becomes empty we will be returning this one so these are the possible set of changes which you can make or the substitutions which you can make the substitution if this is returned as an mgu okay so that is what the unification algorithm another example we will consider a very simple example and before that uh, let's uh, see individual statements after individual statements we will see an example then we will brush up the algorithm as well and that uh, completes the um, half of the module uh, module 2 okay so see here for all x knows john comma x implies hates john comma x for all x for all the person x if john knows x that implies john hates x whoever john knows he hates means whoever he knows in his life he hates all of them he's a stupid person right so john jane this is given to us john knows jane what can i imply from that john hates jane and it's given that for all y y knows uh Ziona, zionia okay y knows zionia for all y i know that y knows zionia for all y i know that y is the mother of y for all x i know that x is the uh, x is elizabeth okay x knows elizabeth for all x x knows elizabeth now this is given to us you have to do the unification which are the unification that can be done consider the first two here we have nose john comma x nose john comma jane this is nose no nose john comma x nose john comma jane if you consider these two john and john it's him we can't do anything jane can be interchanged with x so i'll be writing here jane or x at the last okay jane or x inside the flower braces then the next one we'll consider nose john comma x nose y comma leo uh, leonid okay so this is leonid right okay so it is l i wrote it as z i only didn't get to know so anyways uh knows this one so we'll consider this and this this can be unified john and y john can be chained with y x can be chained with leonia okay so that's what i've written here uh leonia can be chained with x and john can be chained with y two possibilities are there and then what we have is y mother of y okay so john can be changed with y and x can be changed with mother of y is it possible let's see um john with y and um, mother of john with x see john can be changed with y here uh, one thing you need to observe carefully what i told see here john can be changed with y okay x can be changed with mother of y what is y here john i can take it as john only so x can be changed with mother of john so it will be written x mother of john okay like that whenever substitution is made you have to use that one so that's why it is written here john y and mother of john x last one 
John X, Elizabeth X. This is contradictory. See, John is substituted with X and Elizabeth also is substituted with X. That is not possible. Okay, that is equal to fail. When the same variable gets substituted recursively, it is a fail. Okay. So, yeah, in predicate logic also it's the same thing. Just few differences will be there. What I uh, discuss is of uh, propositional logic, but in exam you will be asked with propositional logic. So, let's discuss one exam question itself. Prove that Marcus hates Caesar using resolution. Very, very important question from exam point of view. Don't miss this one. Prove that Marcus hates Caesar using resolution. Before we uh, try to prove using resolution, uh, means using backward substitution, right? Now we'll be trying to prove using resolution. Let's see how to do that. Using resolution, how you have to do? First, you have to write the sentence here. The sentence they will al already give. Hate Marcus, Caesar. This is what you have to prove. Marcus hates, uh, Marcus hates Caesar. And for that, first, uh, let's recall the uh, clauses. Uh, what we had written. This is in the form of... Um, clauses okay clause form so after we have written the clause form this they'll give in the question uh, itself so after we have written this one what we'll be doing is we'll be starting from here observe carefully if you understood this one in unification algorithm resolution all the algorithms will be very simple for you okay so see here marcus caesar marcus hates caesar okay so that is what we have to consider here okay we'll be considering the contradiction of it whatever we have to prove what you have to consider the contradiction of it so not hate marcus comma caesar now after i've written the contradiction i'll be finding one term which is contradiction with this one which is nothing but hate marcus caesar only i'll find this one in my rules in my rules where is hate um, marcus comma caesar hate xy where do we find hate xy here if you find hate xy here write this whole sentence and then eliminate this one you will be remaining with just this one roman x2 loyal x2 caesar right will be remaining with this one roman x2 loyal x2 caesar x2 in our case is marcus so i'll be writing here wherever x2 is marcus and caesar was here so caesar will be here as well after i've written this one you have to search contradiction with this one and what is the contradiction either i have to find roman marcus or i have to find loyal to okay so let's see where i find um sorry roman marcus i have to find or not loyal to i have find okay so not loyal to i can find here and roman i can find here both the things i can find i can go with any of those okay so in this case i'm going with three three means it is given here in the third rule roman x1 roman x1 or not pompian x1 so i'll be writing the same thing here roman x1 not pompian x1 so roman x1 not pompian x1 okay or roman x1 and roman marcus this will get cut not Pompeian X1 will remain. Not Pompeian X1 means not Pompeian Marcus because X1 is Marcus here. So this will be remaining and this will be same as from here. Okay, just the substitution what you make that will be written here. Instead of X1 we will write Marcus. So we'll be mentioning here what changes we are making here. After we have written this one, then we have to find out again the contradictory terms. If you see the rule number two, what is written in rule number two is Pompeian Marcus. Pompeian Marcus is written. So we'll be choosing that one only Pompeian Marcus and you'll be moving ahead pompeian marcus will be written here it will be cut with this one so pompeian marcus is cut only loyal to marcus is will remain loyal to marcus caesar by uh, rule number seven let's see what is rule number seven not loyal to marcus caesar is given here so if this is given here these all things will remain these three things will remain these three things will what remain so these three things i have written here again with one i will uh, consider it is given as man marcus right man marcus is contradictory with the first term here not man marcus so this will get cut and these uh, two terms will remain these two terms again with four the same thing will happen i'll keep on doing and here what i'll get is not try assassinate and in eight what i have direct um, rule i have try assassinate so when we get these two contradictory terms and nothing remains that means it's a contradiction just the difference is that if they give you predicate logic you have to convert that into clause form and then remove the existential quantifiers um the implies you have to remove and for all these all things you have to remove and do the same procedure as in the propositional logic okay now let's brush up uh, briefly here is another example but uh, okay i'll come to this example after i discuss the algorithm so see here let's uh, brush up the resolution concepts and the algorithm so i think so resolution was done in the resolution i just uh, discussed um how to apply the rules i think i was in the predicate logic 
yeah unification algorithm right so in order to uh, determine contradictions means two terms are there like r was there and i have to find uh, see not r was there and i have to find out a term with r and something these are the two contradictions to find out the contradictions we need a matching procedure this is called as matching procedure that compares two literals and discovers whether they exist in a set of substitution that make them identical this is uh, identical substitution so for that only we will be using the unification algorithm to find out which is the uh, matching algorithm there is a recursive procedure called unification algorithm the process of finding a substitution for the predicate parameters is called unification okay so the uh, algorithm goes as follows initial predicate symbols must match initial predicate symbols must match means r and not r these two initial symbols must match this is a secondary thing okay for each pair different constants cannot match if it is r and q these two cannot be substituted uh, what i mean is here this example i gave right uh, instead of here, instead of x, if it was Allen, if it was Allen and Marcus, these two are constant. These cannot be substituted. That's one of the rule. Okay, a variable may be replaced by a constant. X with Marcus can be replaced. A variable may be replaced by another variable. X with Y can be replaced. A variable may be replaced by a function as long as function does not contain same instance of variable. If it contains same instance, it's not possible. Okay, that's what uh, happened here. If it was, uh, it was the same instance wherein uh, in one of the examples we are not able to uh, substitute and it returned fail right so where was it yeah here only here it returned fail why because x is here and x is here john with x x with elizabeth same variable is coming two times here that is what is called um, the same variable substitution it will re um, return fail okay so th these are the, just the rules and unification example px and py is there then x can be uh, replaced with y so substitution can be written as follows if it is x y and y z x can be replaced with y x can be replaced with z so i can write it in this form okay and fx and x fx cannot be replaced with x same function with the same thing it cannot be replaced so px q j n p bill q y where is p match that x and bill where is q match that j n and y bill x j n y fine so this example i had discussed and the algorithm very simple what you have to do is if l1 or l2 both variables are constants then if l1 and l2 are identical return nil if they are same it's no point in substituting send, uh, so return nil else if l1 is a variable if this is a variable and if l1 occurs in l2 then return fail if x already occurs in this one then return fail if it does not return in this one then return l2 comma l1 l2 can be substituted in the place of l1 that's written here the reverse is written if l2 exists in uh, l1 then return fail else return l1 uh, substituted with l2 else if these all conditions fail return fail okay and uh, after that what we'll be doing if the initial predicate symbol in l1 and l2 are not identical then return fail for example p of x and q of y nothing can be done these two should be same then only substitution will happen for example p of z is here z can be changed with uh, x y because p is same if this is not same in the first uh, case like in this case it's not same then we'll be returning fail here sorry here fail okay that's what the rule is written here if l1 and l2 are a different number of arguments then return fail for example if you have p of x comma y and q of x okay so let's take p only p of z this will be substituted with this one what about this one it will have no one here so that is also not valid okay that's all some of the rules and we'll be doing that for all the arguments from i is equal to 1 till uh, the end means if you have three arguments x y z and another p is there here a b c first we'll be substituting this with this one i is equal to 1 i is equal to 2 i is equal to 3 till the number of arguments we'll be doing this uh, these things uh, means um alternate this one alternate this one alternate this one that's all it is if it is fail then return fail if it is not equal then return to nil if it is uh, different than both then uh, make the substitution append the substitution in the subset subset means at last you'll have that substitution set right like uh, in our case um, what are the substitution set you yeah, are written in this example yeah this is the substitution set this one this is one this one all these substitutions are in a set that is called a substitution set finally we will be returning this answer here that's how unification algorithm is and that's how you'll be by hurting as well okay so it's not by hurting because you have already understood this thing if you did not then you can rewind the video and watch again okay so here the example is given and let's come back to the so here also it's the same thing predicate logic also the same thing convert the statement to clause form this is the first thing negate p find its contradiction 
and if it is contradiction then uh, say it as contradiction or else find t1 and t2 eliminate t1 and not t1 if it is empty return false if it is not then uh, take the remainder do again and uh, take the remainder do again until you reach a contradiction if you don't reach then uh, um, return fail okay if you reach the contradiction that means the assumption is false you can return as true means the uh, term which you consider if that is um, see you consider not r you got as false this means that this is not true you'll be returning the uh, reverse of it which is r and uh, you'll be returning that as true okay so that's what you'll be doing and i hope so you got a brief idea of how, how to do this one let's uh, brush up our um, topic with uh, this uh, simple example here we have some lines here john likes all kinds of food apple is food chicken is food anything anyone eats and is not killed is food bill eats peanuts and is still alive some eat everything uh sue eats everything bill eats she is a person who eats everything bill eats whatever bill eats okay so uh, the questions are given here convert all our statement to predicate logic show that john likes uh, peanuts using back uh, back chaining which also called as back word substitution convert statement to class form and use resolution to show that john likes peanuts you have to use res resolution here three things you have to do here convert into predicate logic and prove using uh, back chaining convert into clause form and uh, using resolution show that this uh, this is true first thing we will do convert all the above statement to predicate logic see john likes all kind of food all is associated with food so we will be writing it in the same x for all x food is associated with the x if it is a food uh, like who likes john like that we will be writing okay second thing apple is a food is a what food what is a food apple like that we will be writing last thing we will write first and what is first thing we will write inside the bracket same thing chicken chicken food inside that you will write chicken anything anyone eats anything anyone two things came here for all x for all y and is not killed by, uh, is a food so for all x for all y eat x y x eats uh, y x eats food and x is not killed what it implies y is food okay like that if you observe carefully it's very simple bill eats peanuts and is still alive so peanuts is eaten by bill bill eats peanuts and who is alive bill so it is and in between so both should be true right next uh, what we have at the last is sue eats everything bill eats if bill eats something obviously that implies sue also eats bill eats something which is x it implies you also eat x for all x bill eats x then uh, co eats x so we have converted successfully into predicate logic next question is uh, show that john likes peanuts using back chaining john likes peanuts so we'll take that only in backward chaining we'll be taking the actual sentence not the contradiction so john like peanut we'll be taking this one and we'll be finding where we are occurring john like peanut in our uh, rules so john uh, likes peanuts where is uh, occurring in the uh, above question in our question, uh, John likes peanuts is composed of two things, right? Like and uh, here is one thing and uh, another thing is here. So we uh, we can find out uh, these things wherever we, uh, we can find out this one. Likes and uh, food. So uh, in the place of like John peanuts, what you can uh, substitute is food peanuts. Why? Because John likes uh, to eat something and eating can only be done with food. So we'll be writing food peanuts here. So if food peanuts is given here and Bill is alive eating um, peanuts, that means we can substitute eat Bill peanuts and alive Bill. So Bill eats peanuts, but uh, Bill is still alive. So I've reached the conclusion that John likes uh, peanuts. Why? Because Bill is alive and that's a, a true fact. We know that for sure. Right, so that's uh, that's what we'll be writing nil here. Okay, so if you practice, you'll get to know what it actually means. Okay. Next, we have convert the statement to clause form. So in clause form, just remove this one and change this one. That's all. So uh, I I've already explained how to do that one. So I'll not be explaining here. After I've written this one, then again we'll be doing the same thing using the resolution you have to do. So John likes peanut. So what you'll write first? John does not like peanut. Not like John peanut first you will take this one and then you will be moving ahead with this one okay so that's all uh, what you'll be doing here not john like peanut then with one you will be uh, doing why with one because one uh, says that john likes peanuts right one is what see if it is a food x john likes it john likes all foods so obviously if uh, john likes all foods they, it is given that john does not like peanut you are taking and John likes peanuts, it's uh, given. So X1 will be substituted with peanuts, will remain with peanuts is not food. Obviously, that only we will get right. See, 
John does not like peanuts. One sentence, John likes all foods. Another sentence, if we consider both as true, John does not like peanut, John likes all food. If both are true means peanut is not uh, food, that is the only uh, valid conclusion we will uh, reach to. So peanut is not food, that is the valid conclusion we are getting here. Then uh, it's compared with 4. What is 4? Four? 4 is written here. In this, what is written is not food is compared with 4. In 4 we have food. If not food is taken, this all uh, things will be taken here. This all things will be taken okay in consideration or else either this thing will be taken or this thing will be taken because implies is in between okay so see here this is simplified as this one so either you can take this one or you can take this one okay so if you take this one not eat or killed not eat or killed will be the valid conclusion not eat or killed means not eat and killed means not alive okay again we'll compare with a six not eat and not alive in six we have alive so that will be uh, getting um cut off alive and not alive what will be remaining with not eat not it will be the thing will be remaining with not eat will be taken into consideration and x2 is equal to bill so if bill is substituted here bill does not eat peanuts bill does not eat peanuts but we have a explicit statement that states bill eats peanuts so that's a contradiction we will be reaching the end here and that's what uh, it will prove that this was the wrong assumption therefore john likes peanuts that will be proved Fine. That's how you uh, prove the statements using uh, resolution. Okay. A small topic which is the horn clauses. It's not asked in the exam. If you want, you can listen or you can uh, end this video. Okay. Conversion to horn clauses. Horn clause is nothing but it will have one or uh, zero positive literal. If it has more than one positive literal, it is not called a horn clause. Okay. So how many positive literal are there? Positive literal one. Valid horn clause. How many positive literal are there? Two. P and Q both are true, right? N none of them is negation. So it is not a um, horn clause. So in horn clause, we'll be converting this into this. Okay, we'll be converting this into this. That's what is called the horn clause. Not P or Q will be written as P uh, implies Q. Okay. So uh, in previous examples, what we did, we converted this into this. Now we'll be converting this into this. Fine, we'll be converting this into this. Now in uh, predicate, uh, how we'll be writing is this is converted to this. Okay, P tends to Q. So P is here and Q is here. P tends to Q. Now uh, to remove this one, um, we'll be simplifying from predicate. We'll be uh, just writing this as not of this one and then or this one. So not of this one is already not is here. Not of not is nothing positive. So we'll be writing a positive or this one. After I've written this one, then uh, move the negations move the negations means wherever we have the negations move that inside not is here move that inside here so when you move that inside it will become see this is the initial this is the final okay i'll explain what's the difference happening where is not not is here not is here and if you observe carefully this not is applicable for this whole bracket if not is applicable for the whole bracket when it goes inside this will change the sign and this will become not and not that's what it is here this will change the sign not read will become and this will change the sign from and to or this will also become not okay so we have to just move the negations no scolemize scolemize we are not doing because there is no existential quantifier so scolemize will not happen if it was there we'll consider any of those as the um, function instead of uh, the existential quantifier if it is existential quantifier y we'll substitute this as f of x instead of y we'll be writing this as f of x okay remove the universal quantifier just remove this one and that means just ignore this one and write it without it that's how you convert into a horn clause the next is the uh, concept learning and said that we have a very important concept which is uh, uh, finding s or candidate something it is there i'll be discussing that in a part two so make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one